Today's lesson is about configuration items. We also call them CI as the abbreviation. It's basically the asset that you have uh, for a particular company. Um, let's see on admin, there's a whole section about it that's over here on the configuration items. We expand that one and there's several items that we have available. And again, CIs, I will use the same uh, wording CIs and configuration items throughout this uh, course. And uh, those are the assets that are for a company. As you can see, this one has already a whole bunch of categories set up. By default, you get only the, the standard, non editable, the basic, and the standard. As you can see, these ones are from the system. You can either create one that's for the API only, but you can create categories on what you think is a good setup to categorize your configuration items. Uh, let's say it's over here a workstation. You might also say it's called an endpoint. Because if you have a workstation, you can also maybe call it laptop or you do workstation and laptop and a desktop and you call it all the same. You call it endpoint. It depends on how you have your structure. Maybe you have an existing structure in place uh, or you have a, a new one. In this case, like it's called application. You can also choose you call it software. How do you do it? It's pretty simple. Press new and a new screen will pop up. And here you can create, okay, let's call it software. There's a nickname, but it's only three characters. Uh, it can be only for API. If you really are into the APIs, you can use it over here. And it also has the header and it will kind of display what you have all available. Now I'm going to show you one that, that has already been set up a little bit more into detail. As you can see, these ones are active and the categories can show you what you have available and what is visible because for a firewall, there's items available. They don't need to be uh, visible for a server. So let's call, let's check on the firewall. Let's edit that one, what we have in here. And here we have uh, same as in the other categories that we did already explain in earlier uh, uh, lessons for the ticket and the, and the project tasks. Here you have the configuration and category is required products. You have the main body uh, and then you can even move them one up. In this case, let's say if you don't have the dot OBCDR, you can edit this one and you can make it uh, not visible. In this case, it's not, not applicable. And there's also available notification templates. More important is on the second tab, there's the details. And here you have a lot more that you can configure. Serial number and reference number, usually those ones are ones that you always want to have. But there's also location and area, number of users. Maybe you always say the location, I want to have it a required field. Remember, edit field and then it pops up. And then you can say if it's a required yes or no, and you can press OK. Contract SLA, there's even user defined fields in here. So for this for the firewall, you might say, yeah, indeed, I have my WAN IP, that is going to be a requirement. You have your terms, your hourly cost, and there's also a whole bunch of hidden fields. And in this case, maybe brand is a UDF. Maybe you want to have that one in there. Maybe you have the vendor already in there. Yes, the vendor is already there, but you can choose because the vendor means that you have to create them as a company or a client into your system. If it's a brand over here, like with the UDF, you can put a whole bunch of brands in there and you don't have to specifically make it as a vendor. That's the kind of trick with this UDF on doing it that way. This is for about the configuration item categories. Now there's much more. There's also configuration item types and it's kind of similar. You can follow the same similar pattern. As you can see over here, we follow the same configuration item types uh, where we have the antivirus, the application, or what is the software, what I mentioned. And uh, I would suggest indeed, if you have a category, then also use the same uh, configuration item type. But again, you can label it how you want it. Here's kind of, it's called a workstation. You can still go in there and edit it. You can say it's called a workstation, desktop, laptop, or between parentheses, you call it an int. You press save and it's easily also over here. You can make a button if it's active, yes or no. There is a private field history and as it over here, view a log of all views and edits private UDF fields on configuration items. Uh, this has been introduced lately and will give you a track of all items. Uh, you can choose it by a field. In this case, there's apparently no uh, private field history because we have not uh, entered anything in here. But this would be a good one when people modify the change. Let's say somebody uh, modified the IP address on an item and somebody is not working, then you can kind of figure out, okay, who made that change? It might, of course, be an, uh, an error that was done 
not on purpose, but here you have it. You can do, go and check your private field history. There's also a mapping. And here you map your configuration item type with the category. And this is very handy, of course. Now, this makes it simple. Antivirus is, is combined with antivirus application to over here. But here you can uh, choose. Now, in this case, what happens over here is a workstation and apply to the workstation desktop laptop. We could have made a choice to uh, use this common name for the configuration uh, item, the, the category, and then create all kinds of separate types for a workstation separately, a desktop and a laptop, and then put them all here underneath and we map them. Let me give you a quick example of that. Configuration item types, I'll create a configuration item type just for the laptop. Press save. And I go to the mapping. And over here, we can now, clicking on it, we can change the name. So over here, it just shows you the mapping. Let me show you how to get to it. So we go to CRM and then configuration item search. We should be able to search by type. Here we are, configuration item type. I'm going to look up one of these ones. Maybe there's one in the uh, uh, laptop. I'm just going to edit configuration item. And I'm going to change the type to the laptop. See over here, configuration item category and configuration item type. Press the pull down button here. And now we have the laptop option over here. We select that one. And we press save and close. And now we can go back to the mapping, the admin, configuration items. And the mapping. And now we have the workstation over here. Uh, there's only nine over here, but there's a total of 10 in this particular group because it didn't map it correct. And that's how you can see how everything is mapped. The last uh, good option over here is a configuration item import, especially if you're migrating from a different platform or you have a client that has a good list of, uh, of all the items that it wants to uh, uh, be managed by you. Uh, right now, there's, there's no, has no, never been any imports, but at least here in the history of all the imports that you want to do. There's the button import. And from here, it will give you a, a file that you can download. Over here, it's the download import template. So download that one first. And modify the, or basically import the items that you have uh, to put it in there. Make sure that it's all unique and make sure that you follow this one. So if a file matching configuration is found, the configuration item is matched on based on product, company, and serial number. And if a match is found, it's either do not update or update existing configuration item. And there's also, you can do some new notification uh, rules, but you can maybe uncheck them while when you're doing it. So here's an import. If you have a lot of items that you want to import, uh, this is a good way to do it. And maybe what you can do in another field, you maybe to try it out, you first test an export from another client to see how the fields are being labeled, because you need to make sure that the labeling is indeed done correctly. This is a good overview of all the options that are available within the, uh, within the admin section for the configuration items. Uh, I showed you the, what is a configuration item, and where is it used, and what are the, all the options available. And the next lesson will be where we create an actual configuration item, and we'll see how that one is available in either way, the contracts and in the, in the asset list for this particular company or client. If you have any questions or comments, please visit our Facebook group and leave a comment over there.